Hello and welcome to Storytime. I am your Storytime reader, Miss Nikki. Today's read aloud is titled, No Monkeys, No Chocolate. This is a non-fiction story that explains where chocolate comes from. Hmm. What questions do you have when you read the title, No Monkeys, No Chocolate? Hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Why is it that if we didn't have any monkeys, we won't have any chocolate? How are monkeys and chocolate connected? Hmm. I love chocolate and I love to read. And if you do too, let's get comfy and read and learn together. Let's begin. No Monkeys, No Chocolate Written by authors Melissa Stewart and Alan Young and beautifully illustrated by Nicole Wong. Chocolate chip cookies, chocolate ice cream, moist fudgy brownies. What makes all these desserts so delicious? Chocolate, of course, but you can't make chocolate without... Cocoa beans. Cocoa beans are the seeds of the cocoa tree. Cocoa trees grow naturally in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. But today, farmers grow them in other tropical areas too. To make chocolate, workers spread cocoa beans with rakes and dry them in the sun. Then they roast them in a giant oven. Later, Machines smash the beans into a thick paste and squeeze out the liquid to make cocoa powder. It gets mixed with a variety of ingredients to make different kinds of chocolate. Cocoa beans can't develop without cocoa pods. Cocoa pods are the fruits of the cocoa tree. They look like small lumpy footballs growing on the tree's trunk and main branches. Inside each pod, white gooey pulp surrounds 30 to 40 cocoa beans, just enough for one candy bar. Cocoa pods can't form without cocoa flowers. When pollen from one cocoa flower lands on another cocoa flower, a tiny tube opens up inside the blossom. Pollen travels down the tube. As soon as material inside the pollen combines with material deep inside the flower, a new cocoa pod begins to grow with seeds inside. And midges. Before a female midge can lay her eggs, the little insect needs a hearty meal of rich, nutritious cocoa pollen. To find food, she crawls deep inside a cocoa blossom. As the midge climbs out, pollen sticks to her body. When she lands on another cocoa flower, some of the pollen falls off and lands inside the blossom. Cocoa flowers can't bloom without cocoa leaves. As the cocoa leaves soak up sunlight, they make sugar. The sugar travels through veins in each leaf to the tree's branches. Then, sugary sap flows through the trunk to the rest of the tree. That's how a tree gets the energy it needs to live and grow and make flowers. And maggots. As soon as leafcutter ants spot tender new leaves on a cocoa tree, the little insects race to reach them. While the hard-working ants slice up the leaves and carry the pieces back to their nest, female coffin flies land on the ants and lay eggs inside their heads. When the eggs hatch, tiny maggots wriggle out and eat the ants' brains. Cocoa 
leaves can't survive without cocoa stems. A cocoa tree's trunk is a thick central stem made of wood. Its branches are smaller woody stems. The tree's smallest stems connect leaves to branches. All these stems transport minerals and water from the tree's roots to its leaves. The leaves need minerals to grow. They use the water to make sugary food for the whole tree. And lizards. Aphids are little insects that jab holes in a cocoa tree's soft green stems and suck up the sugary juices inside. But a hungry anole is nearby. The little lizard skitters along the tree's branches eating aphids and other insects. Cocoa stems can't grow without cocoa roots. A cocoa tree's roots suck up water from the soil. They also absorb minerals such as calcium and iron. The stems and the rest of the tree need these materials to live and grow. Roots also hold the cocoa tree in place. Fungi live in rainforest soil. As they grow, tiny root-like threads called hyphae spread out in every direction. When hyphae bump into a dead plant or animal, they release chemicals that break it down. Then they absorb the rotting bits and digest the minerals the fungus needs to live and grow. The extra minerals pass out of the hyphae into the soil where they can be absorbed by the roots of nearby cocoa trees. Cocoa pods, flowers, leaves, stems and roots can't grow without cocoa beans. If a cocoa bean lands in just the right place, a tiny root pushes down into the soil. Then a slender shoot stretches up toward the sky. As time passes, the little seedling grows into a tree. When it's about five years old, the cocoa tree begins producing flowers and fruit. Some cocoa trees live up to 60 years. And monkeys. Monkeys yank pods off cocoa trees, gnaw holes in the fruits, and pull out the sticky insides. As the monkeys travel through the rainforest, they suck on the lemony lime pulp and spit out the beans. Cocoa pods never fall off cocoa trees. If monkeys and a few other animals didn't scatter cocoa beans on the ground, new cocoa trees couldn't grow. The end. So now we know the relationship between trees and animals in the rainforest. The authors Melissa Stewart and Alan Young want us the readers to know we wouldn't have chocolate if it weren't for all the different parts of a plant, like the cocoa pods, the flowers, leaves, stems, roots, and beans, and their use by different animals for food, like the midges, leafcutter ants, coffin flies, aphids, anoles, and yes, monkeys, who help to pollinate, distribute seeds, control pests, and other important acts needed to continue the life cycle and production of cocoa beans. Sadly, in the last 30 years, more than 40% of the world's tropical rainforests have been destroyed. But we can do something to help. Like. Read more books about tropical rainforests and the creatures that live in them. Then share what you've learned with your family and friends. Join a group that helps protect rainforests. Work with people at your school to raise money for organizations that buy and preserve tropical rainforest land. Live in a way that decreases your impact on the natural world. Turn off lights and computers when you leave a room.
In the winter, put on a sweater and keep your house a little cooler. In the summer, use air conditioning only when necessary. Take shorter showers and turn off the water while you brush your teeth. If you buy a new computer or TV, look for energy efficient products. Encourage your parents to bring reusable bags to the grocery store. Eat less meat and more locally grown fruits and vegetables. Recycle bottles, cans and paper at home and at school. Compost your food waste and use it to fertilize a garden. Plant a tree in your yard or at your school. I hope you enjoyed today's Read Aloud. Thank you for listening. Until next time, keep asking questions and stay curious.